Today we're gonna to take a look at the serve. The serve can be tricky because there's so many opinions on the serve and there are really so many ways to hit the serve. But we're gonna break it down step by step from the ground up and I'll show you the differences between uh, what is a style of a serve, like a swing style, versus an actual foundational building block. So let's go. Oh, I can't forget the camera. All right, you guys, so we are here on the court. Uh, it is very cold out here. However, it's been raining so long. We've been kept inside uh, playing tennis indoors for so long that it's good to get outside. And so our serve video will be uh, outside. This is Todd right here. Hey Todd, guys. say hi. What's up, guys? How's it going? Um, yeah, we're going to be working on the serve today. And uh, for me, th this is the beginning of the 2019 40 plus season which uh, I'm a competitor in and also it's the first tournament of the year I play in the 45 and over division up here in Seattle. Uh, in if you don't know Todd is the number one player in the PNW in his division right now so that's pretty cool he plays a ton of tennis still. And um, the first tournament of the year starts in three weeks so we're uh, kind of all getting ready for the 40 plus season and for that first tournament. Yeah, I had a kind of a breakthrough with my serve. Um, for the past maybe three months, I've completely lost my toss, which has never happened to me before. Um, I started watching some YouTube videos. I did a search and watched like 10 videos and still I was struggling, struggling for a while now. And then yesterday, boom, I figured something out. I just had a, one of those rare breakthroughs. And um, actually after, I figured out this thing. I went online and I typed in Roger Federer serve toss and there was a guy on there that did a six part series all on Roger's toss and he's doing it the exact way that I figured out. So it was really cool to see that and I want to share that with you guys. All right, so when we get into the surf part of it or the toss part of it, we'll bring Todd in and uh, he'll share that with you as well. I'm going to set up everything and get ready to do this so I'll get right back with you. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the serve and we're gonna work on the serve from the ground up. So the first thing to notice about the serve or what we're gonna focus on are the feet. When I turn sideways to serve, this left foot, if I'm right-handed, this left foot is gonna be at a 45 degree angle to the baseline. My right foot is gonna be parallel with the baseline. It's not only parallel, it's actually pulled. I'm gonna step back a little bit. When I step back like that, that creates shoulder turn. So as you come back up to my shoulders, the more that I step back, the more that I'll be able to generate shoulder turn towards the ball, meaning those are your biggest serves, your best powers, your best spins, um, and that all kind of hinders, or, or not hinders, but uh, starts with the fact that we can get the shoulders turned all the way to the side here. The next thing that we're gonna take a look at is uh, the stance, the pinpoint stance, or what's called the platform stance. And basically those are these things. If I turn to the side like this, I'm either gonna go into a platform stance, which is both feet away, and then when I serve, I serve from that position, or I'm gonna go into a pinpoint stance where I start like this and I bring this foot up and go into my serve. Regardless of which one you do, those are hitting styles. That is not gonna necessarily improve or hinder, hinder your serve. So that is up to you. It's your choice on what one you wanna do. Like I said, there's styles of how to hit the serve. So we're not gonna necessarily focus in on that part. We're just focusing on the foundational uh, elements to the serve. All right, that brings us into the toss. What you wanna know about the toss or what you wanna think about the toss a couple key things. Straight arm. That's a really big thing. Don't allow your elbow to be bent. When you do that, uh, the ball will follow you. So as you bend it too soon, it will drag with you going back over your head or there's times where you'll come in and you'll release it too early and it will go too far in front of you. Straight elbow is a good thing. Straight wrist. Uh, the wrist is actually going to go, so if this is completely straight, the wrist is actually going to lay down like this and it will kind of stay at that posture, it will kind of stay laid down, but it does that all the way through the toss. Um, 
you want to realize that when I go to toss the ball, notice how I'm holding that ball. I'm holding it like this. I'm not holding it like this. Todd's breakthrough uh, is going to talk about that. And as we were doing this video right here, that's something that I realized that I did. I didn't even know that I did it. It just uh, has been a way that I've tossed forever. Um, luck luckily, I don't have any problems with my toss. And that kind of confirms that I have a great toss. So we're going to hold it like this. Again, the wrist is relaxed. It's laid kind of down. The arm is straight. When I lift it, the release point on a serve, and this is getting pretty specific, but the release point is from your chin to your forehead. If you can release in that general area, you are gonna have a consistent toss long-term. If you release before that or you go over that, that's where the toss will fluctuate. So you get in here and you, you release that toss right about here. When the ball is gone, so I have released it, it's gone. Now the key is to continue to bring that arm up because you've got to set up for the serve. As I come back, I'm going to continue to bring it way over my head like this. This is a common thing that I see uh, most servers at the club level. They, they do not do that. They don't come back far enough. They come right here. And that's just, that's not allowing your body to be in the best position for the serve. If you watch my posture, so if I'm standing like this here, and I only release right here and I leave my arm right here, not a lot has happened to this left hip. But as the ball is gone and I continue to bring this arm up, this hip really starts to pop out and it gets in front. And that's, your, that's the load for the serve, that's the ability to go up and into the ball is by getting this hip and popping this hip out. And you do that from bringing this hand all the way up over your head. So those are kind of the ideas on the toss. We go into the swing path and on the swing path, there's many different uh, ways to go about bringing your racket up to uh, the setup position or some people call it the halo or um, the check mark. I've heard of many different things, but nonetheless, there's many ways in. So I'm gonna go through those ways and because this is a style of how you serve, you choose what you like. There's not a right or a wrong way. You're gonna get some people that they come in like this where they, they drop the racket right down in here. They leave it very, very low for a very long time. As they're tossing, this arm comes way up and then they start the motion to come up to the ball. You get other people that go at the same time. That's more my serve is I come here like this and I bring them kind of up together into the hitting position, which would be up here. And then you get some people that don't do either of those and they cut it short, they abbreviate it. And they just bring their racket up here like this. The key to this, this is not a beginner serve, so or a beginner position. When you first learn to serve, you probably learn to take the racket and put it on your shoulder. A lot of people will say that, put it on your shoulder and get it, get it kind of ready and and prepared so you don't have to think about it. That's not this, this is different. This is a server coming up into the check mark position or into the halo position right up in here and they're loaded up and ready to serve and then they make their toss. So those are kind of different from the uh, when you first learned how to, how to hit the serve. Once you get into that position, so this check mark, this halo position, once you get into that position, it's about understanding that you need to be able to see your hand and the rack ahead at the same time. Here's what I mean. So I've, I've tossed the shot. My hand has come way up over my head like this, and now my racket has also come up right through here. And I can actually see, you notice these are very close together. They're not very far apart. And the server that does this more than anybody is uh, Roger Federer. So he gets to where he prepares and he sees both of those things at the same time and that's your best load up or you're, you're ready to go up and hit your serve, okay? Getting into that position, I wanna talk about a couple things, mainly um, to talk about the shoulder and how to protect your shoulder. There's a couple things I see a lot. Too low of an elbow, so you get ready to prepare and your elbow is way down here, down by your side. That hinders your ability to hit your serve hard. It, you cannot um, go up and into the ball 
the right way. So you need to be able to bring that elbow up. The other thing that I see often, especially on the women's side, is this hand, it raises really high up and this elbow goes very, very high above their head. And when that happens, you'll start to get shoulder damage. When the elbow is up this high and you're going to hit a serve, the, the shoulder, the rotator cuff, starts to rub on this bone right here. And it starts to just wear on it. And that's why your shoulder, if it's aching, that is probably the cause. I have a lot of clients that they come in with um, hurt shoulders. We'll look at their serve. I'll show them how to keep the serve or the elbow low and their, their shoulder problems will kind of disappear. So the way to do that, to keep the, the elbow where it needs to be, is when you prepare, however that is, you need to keep the hand about your head height. So if I can keep it right here, the elbow's in the right position. If it's down, if the hand's too low by my shoulder, it's too low, and then if my hand's above my head, the, sh the elbow's too high. So the hand right here is the perfect spot to be, okay? Um, also, as you go into that, that motion and you load up like this, you'll notice that now my hip is kicked out, so I'll get into the right position. I come up together with mine. I load up, my hip is kicked out, and my left arm is coming way up here. I can see the racket, I can see my hand, and now I am ready to go up and hit the ball. So I've loaded up, I'm prepared, and now I'll release up into the ball. And when I do that, this shoulder, this shoulder will start to rise over this shoulder. So right now, this is the top shoulder, and we basically cartwheel. So you come in like this, and you start to cartwheel down, and as you drop down, this one drops up, or this one pulls up. And that is the proper uh, way to hit a serve as far as going up into the ball, is this one's way up here and this one's down, and then they just, they basically swap each other and you go to hit the shot. The finish of the shot. So on the finish, this again is uh, situational. You will have different finishes. If you remember Jim Courier, if you don't know him, look him up. Uh, as he goes to hit, he actually comes off to the opposite side all the time. He never finishes off to the left. I'm not sure why that is, but he, he just comes to this side. I would encourage you to go off to the left. It's a little more sound, a little more structural, but again, it is optional. And as you go off to the left, when you go to make contact with the ball, you're gonna hit this ball. You're gonna turn the racket out a little bit. It's gonna go away from you. That is called pronation. As it goes away from you, you're just gonna let it drop down and come across to the left side of your body. Those are your keys on serving. I'm gonna hit some serves. I'm gonna show you uh, what I mean on that. And then I'm also gonna bring in some footage of some very good servers like Federer and we'll pick a couple more. And you'll see that there are commonalities to all great servers. Certain things that every server does. And then there's like the things that we talked about, which are your hitting style. Things that uh, you can pick and choose that you like. Hopefully with these things I've showed you, it's given you an idea on the key elements to be able to improve your serve. Uh, like I was talking about on the toss and Todd was saying that he made a discovery on his toss. We're gonna go into that. I'm gonna pass it over to Todd real quick and you'll see what he was talking about. All right, so for about the past three months, I've been struggling with my toss and it's the first time this has ever happened to me in my life. I've been playing since I was eight. I'm 47 years old. I took a few years off here and there, but basically, for the past 38 or so years, I've never had a problem with my toss. And all of a sudden, I started throwing the ball all over the place. And, uh, you know, the ball was, I, I was using my wrist. I started kind of adding this little flick. And I tried, you know, getting my fingers out of it and, you know, letting the ball come out like the way I teach. But I was struggling and the toss was going everywhere. My first serve percentage went way down and I've been playing bad because of it. Your serve is the most important shot and when your serve goes, the rest of your game will suffer. So, yesterday I was out playing with a buddy of mine 
and for some reason I just started to tinker with it and I figured something out and like I said I went home I went on YouTube I typed in Roger Federer toss and I saw this is exactly how he does it and today we saw this is how Jordan does it so I've never seen anyone teach this um, I've always seen people teaching you know keep it in the fingertips keep your palm up and let go of the ball with your palm up and open your fingers up which is the way you would think it is the right way to do it but what I discovered yesterday and what I'm seeing these good players do is as I drop my hand down I'm turning my hand sideways so my palm is not up and by having my hand sideways when I lift the ball up to toss it there's no way I can throw my wrist and my fingers up so I, I get the power from going up and I'm just letting go and it's just coming out of my hand like this with no spin there's no way with my hand to the side that I can throw it or roll it off my wrist like I was doing so um, I'm basically just taking the wrist and the, and the fingers out of it by keeping it sideways um, so I know a lot of you are golfers this is a similar concept that I see in putting you'll see players that want to take their right hand out of it when they putt because when you putt with the right hand you make a lot of errors so you'll see people using the claw and this is how I putt I play a lot of golf too and using this claw method just takes that right hand out of it or you'll see people that do cross-handed putting where they're trying to take their right hand out of it or you see those you know long putters where they're where they're getting that uh, putter so that the right hand can't maneuver it so it's the same idea we're trying to take the wrist and the left hand out of it so by being sideways like this and releasing it here you take that chance of throwing it with your wrist or using your fingertips out of it and so far it's only been a day but it's the best I've served in like six months so I'm really excited about it and it was cool to see a Roger Federer doing it this way and also Jordan doing it this way which he has a great toss and a great serve too so try it out see what you think let us know what you think of that we'd love to hear from you and um, hope that helps you guys, thanks for joining us for this video, this serve video. We're going to be doing a lot of these uh, vlog style videos uh, in the future. We have fun with these. And we're going to kind of give you more of an inside look into what it's like to be a teaching pro and also what it's like to be a competitive player playing in the USTA leagues and also in the USTA tournaments. It's pretty good. All right, we'll see you later.